12.05 p.m. Uh, Madam Clerk, can you call the roll? Here. 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 We will now hear public comments not pertaining to the items on the agenda. Please complete a speaker request form located at the entrance of the city council chamber and give it to the clerk. Your name will be called when it is your turn to speak and you will have three minutes to speak. Uh, do we have any written Comments? We do not have any written comments. And nobody is present, so let's move on. We will now consider, the, this is a consent calendar, we will now consider items on the consent calendar which will be enacted in one motion unless there is a request to remove them, re remove an item for discussion. May I have a motion to second? Second. Or, yes, and the recommendation for the consent is to approve the July 12th, 2023 Transaction and Use Tax Citizens Oversight Committee Special Meeting Minutes. Okay, do we have a second? Halen Vickle, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Okay, staff, please present the result, the report. Okay, it's on. There you Better. Go. Okay. So, good afternoon, um, transaction and use tax committee members. Um, so tonight, today, this afternoon's agenda, I will be presenting um, to the committee the um, fiscal year 2023 uh, revenues and expenditures uh, report. This report is unaudited. Um, we are currently undergoing our year-end audit um, with our independent audit firm. And once the figures are audited and the financial report is issued, then I will come back and present to you the updated numbers if anything changes based on audited figures. And so let's take a look at our, um, for fiscal year 23, the measure year revenue um, is, uh, was 3.4 million, 3 million for 11, 458. Um, I just want to share what we had in the budget was three million four twenty six. So we're just slightly below, about fourteen thousand dollars, slightly under what we had uh, in the revised budget uh, for Measure U revenues. And just to give you a little bit of history, the budget we do a biannual budget, and so for fiscal year twenty three, it was the second year of the two year budget. So we did twenty one twenty two. 2223. So typically the second year of the budget we do an update. So the original projection for Measure U when we adopted the budget for that two-year budget was the revenues were projected just under 2.9 million, but then we did an adjustment and increased it by 540,000 because you know when we do that adjustment we look at trends and where revenues are coming in. We consult with HDL who provides us uh, projections and that's how the 3426 figure um, was adjusted to based on, on trends at that time. Things have started to slow down a little bit. You know, uh, sales, consumer goods, people, I think consumers are um, pulling back a little bit. So I'm not surprised that it's just under the 3.426 million. Um, and then the expenditures, as I'll share with you, um, are 3411458 or actually they're just a little bit over, um, but revenue and expenditures net to um, zero. And so let's take a look at the expenses. I put, I broke them out into different departments because the schedule is very busy. Um, so the revenue is at 3 million, 411, 458, and then public safety is our first um, 
component of expenditures. And you can see the total for public safety was $2,398,000. Um, and the breakdown includes the different positions that are being paid with Measure U revenue. Um, we have a police sergeant, a police officer senior. We have two full-time positions. A police officer, that's a, a, a part-time, or not a part-time, but it's half of a position that's being funded. Uh, police communication officers uh, for uh, dispatch are three full-time positions. And then the rest of the expenses are uh, either uh, uh, capital like in, or equipment, like the computer data dispatch, the CAD system, clothing, uniform allowance, uh, body cameras and tasers, uh, department. Part of it is the police department remodel, and that's an ongoing remodel. Uh, but the dollars that you see here, like the 81000 for the police department remodel, that's what was actually spent in the fiscal year. Um, so that's not the total amount of the project. That's just what was spent. Um, police department upgrades and improvements. Um, and then uh, the patrol vehicles, we lease our, the vehicles. So that's the least expense for the year for all of the patrol vehicles. And then we have... Um, the emergency, we're leasing vehicles uh, through Fleet Enterprise, correct. Um, and then the emergency, uh, emergency preparedness manager. And so that's the, um, the total for public safety. The next um, component of the expenditures are streets and maintenance. And again, we have staff um, that works on maintaining city parks, the pier, removing graffiti, um, and that's $119,000. And that's a 1.5 FTE, so one and a half equivalent. Um, neighborhood speed, speed cushion installation. And again, actual dollars that were spent. So that is not what the project costed, but that's what was spent in fiscal year 23. Um, the paint for the community center, $84,000. And then on street maintenance and supplies, it's a combination of equipment, a lot of equipment rental, purchases of concrete, and then other small supplies. Um, and then the streets staff. So this is different than the maintenance. This is street staff uh, that maintain actual streets, alleys, sidewalks. Um, that's two and a half full-time equivalent. Um, again, street equipment. And I just put some examples of what the detail of the report provided. So it's like blowers, uh, wrenches, uh, and then we have also included the public works break room remodel, the city hall remodel, uh, streets landscape vehicles. Again, those are the vehicles that are leased uh, for streets, uh, the generator, and then the storm drain repair. There are several, so this is number two. Uh, for nine hundred and seventy one thousand dollars nine eighty and then the last slide is the parks and recreation again the vehicles are broken down they have one vehicle we have recreation staff working on a lot all of the recreation activities um, that the city has sponsored uh, contracts, supplies, and other um, equipment needed for recreation. We separated the senior exercise program. And then the last component is the um, information technology, which is really our enterprise system. We are converting our legacy system into a new Tyler um, software. And those are the costs for the in, in the fiscal year that were um, supported by Measure U funds uh, for the conversion. And so that actually the total expenditures are 3421 So it's just a little bit over um, the 3411 in revenues. Um, and what I have here as next step is, is what I um, talked about earlier that we'll be coming back. Likely it will be the March 24, 2024 meeting because the auditors typically are audited financials are completed by March 31st. 
And then we take those to council, and unless we had a meeting like in January, but it's going to be sometime in early um, 2024 when we'll have audited numbers that we can present to, to the committee again. Um, and then the other component I wanted to talk about the, the, um, was that, um, and I think part of the agenda is forming an ad hoc committee and looking at the committee providing input to staff on prioritization of projects that we can take into consideration when we generate the budget or when we re generate the mid-year updates. Um, and so I wanted to include this in as the next step. Uh, any questions? Generally speaking, um, the, the numbers I looked over between the audited and the straight numbers are about the same. Does it change much? I don't expect um, I don't expect a lot of adjustments, specific as it relates to Measure U, because the Measure U revenue is very specific, and so there shouldn't be anything related to the revenue. There shouldn't be anything related to the expenses unless we missed an accrual. So if there was an invoice that we paid in 24 that relates to 23 the auditors might have us book that or or vice versa i don't i don't expect anything uh changing significantly if it does any significant changes um then the other question is with the software the information technology stuff is that what does that benefit the entire city is it police is it um it benefits the city. Um, the ERP software is being rolled out in phases, uh, meaning uh, it's, it's a long process. It's a two-year process to get the city all converted into the new system. Uh, we started out with the financials, uh, making payments, um, and we're rolling out utility billing. Um, we're actually in the middle of doing payroll. So it benefits the entire city public works. Um, it's an entire um, enterprise system. I guess I don't know what that mm -hmm. means. We have a legacy system that I think, I don't know how long we've had it, but it's a legacy system. So this is more of a cloud-based type of system and it allows the city to also um, go paperless so we can upload documentation, like when we pay invoices, they're uploaded into the system, so they're uh, available um, and allows for more transparency of records because everything's electronic versus having um, hard copies of information. And is this going to, this will then change the way uh, citizens pay our utility bills? Eventually, it will change. It will be, it, it, there will be updates and it will be more efficient, effective. Yes, we're not quite there yet. Actually, the utility portion of it is going to start in December and it takes some time to implement, but it, eventually it will. Mm -hmm. uh, last question I, I would have is, our, I'm sure somebody's thought about this, but mm -hmm. we've got all this ransomware stuff with systems getting crashed and you can't do that to paper, but it seems like um, we've heard cities and organizations being attacked. And yeah, do we have, or, or is that part of what we're paying for to protect us? That's part of a combination of our IT department, and then part of the contract that we have is with Tyler Muniz, who's a reputable, you know, company. They've uh, converted a couple, a lot of cities, I should say. Um, so that should not be an issue. Yeah. But a lot of it is our internal um, controls that we have in, in firewalls. I have some questions. Mm -hmm. uh, what I, I kind of did what David did and, and broke it down with the percentages we were, uh, the trends we were seeing over the fiscal year, what the percentages we were seeing in each um, department. <clears throat> I'm totally on board with more than half of it being police or public safety. I think that's great. What percentage of their budget does Measure U actually fund, their yearly budget? I can take a look and give you that reply. I have my laptop okay. to give you that, yeah. Um, and what was, what was involved in the remodel, and is that an ongoing thing, or...? For the police remodel, it's a project. It's not well. It's ongoing because it's it's uh, it uh, rolled over from prior year to twenty four, but it should be completed 
this fiscal year in 2024. And do you know anything what that was about? I have the, yeah, I have the details of the total cost of the project. If, if, um, I was just wondering what, what it mm-hmm. entailed, what they mm-hmm. were actually remodeling. Mm-hmm. Um, and then this, um, emergency prep communications manager. So that's a, that's a single position mm-hmm. that's being funded. Mm-hmm. Okay. So we can expect to see that on, on every. That the positions are on, or like I put FTE full-time equivalents. And so those are ongoing, um, obviously staff leaves, but we'll replace with, they, they replace with somebody else. So yes, those are full-time equivalents. That's the full-time equivalent position. Well, cause I'm seeing this year the, in the 23, we spent 181,000 on emergency prep slash comm manager. In the previous um, report was 154,000. So I'm just wondering That's if this probably is probably likely related to like meriting cola increases. Um, we had living wage uh, or um, market increases okay. that were impacted 2023. Okay, because mm-hmm. I yeah I understand mm-hmm. because benefits, that benefits everything's all that includes everything. In Correct, that's okay. benefits. <laughs> and then okay, so I think that's it for public safety. Now, what about the um, on the the public works? What is the city hall remodel, and is that also an ongoing? The project? city hall remodel is completed now. So that was a lot of the retrofit, like the lighting that was done. Um, and really remodeling to the like the carpet, but uh, the roof, uh, HVAC, and that was closed out in fiscal year 2023. Okay, so mm-hmm. we should we shouldn't see a remodel. Not for the city hall. Correct. Um, and then the public works break room remodel. I'm just I'm kind of. I'm a little stuck on that one because I don't see how that benefits the, the public <laughs> um, or the citizens of Port Wyneme. Um, I understand is comfort and everything for the public works, but what 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 issues did they have or what was needed there? It's remodeling and it's also enhancing the ability for public works to store information. I mean, pu- basically store their their information their. Uh, working records. Um, I can give you more detail. I can pull more, I can retrieve the details that were exactly. Um, well, yeah, because it says break room. It doesn't say yeah. like office, you know. Yeah, they all, yeah. So I can give you more details on that project. And that's also one time. So the ones that's completed, which will be completed this fiscal year, it will not be a uh, reoccurring expense. And the IT, do we do we expect more um, more coming on that, or is that a... IT? We do expect more because, as I mentioned, it's the multi-year, and we're paying it as they complete the work. So we certainly, you know, don't want to pay them ahead of time. So as they complete the phases, um, they're billing this billing us for the work that has been completed. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm-hmm. Any other questions? Okay. I, oh. Questions from the audience? <laughs> yeah, no, um, so, and sorry I'm late. I was double booked. But um, uh, I don't want to repeat, uh, you know, because I know I'm coming in late, but I, I don't know if Lupe said this, but, you know, Lupe and I had talked a lot about uh, this meeting beforehand and um, talked about just big picture, wanting to make sure that we have that ongoing dialogue with the committee about um exactly the kinds of questions you're asking so i appreciate it because it's like what kind ki- what kinds of things are the committee supportive of using this funding for and what kind of things you know we shouldn't we should start steering away from and start planning for other funds to to use you know to utilize for the projects so we'll get some more information on some like the public works break room i'm not i think that it might be connected it might actually be two pieces and it was the conference room and the break room and the conference room would have a little bit more of a justification for like we have meetings with contractors and you know things like that in there, but um, we can look at that closer. But um, I don't know if Lupe had already said this, but like one of the things where we were looking for is sort of that big picture guidance. Um, 
we went through the ballot language and we we uh, put together the list uh, because we believe that the ballot language spoke to police services, uh, services that sort of impact our customer service and serving the community uh, and recreational programming uh, and public works improvement. So we tried to put a, together a list focused on those things. And so your feedback on which of those to keep focusing on and which maybe don't make sense is, is uh, appreciated. And we'll use that. I know one of the questions was, um, you know, are some of these things going to continue next year? Um, our plan is to use the feedback from these meetings to start putting the list together for next year. And some projects like the council chambers remodel, which actually includes these TVs and audio, the new equipment that you're using and the new buttons and all that. Um, we finished that, but now we have a new phase, which is the police station remodel. That one I do think has a huge public impact where it's gonna have new you know, customer service at the front here for the police station again, which I guess we had had many years ago. So um, so we're, we're kind of fine tuning those, those projects, fine tuning the um, lists and uh, just your feedback and these conversations are really appreciated in helping us do that. So thank you. You mean we wouldn't have to come and knock on the police door and wait for some <laughs> it's a pet peeve of mine right now i just walk in every morning and look at it and i'm just like <laughs> and uh probably too much information but it's we're doing like a full police station remodel and we were looking at moving our records keeping up to the front and then we started to realize well we want more customer service focus there so it ended up causing a little bit of a, a hiccup and a delay where it's going to take a few more months but the end result is going to be an improvement in customer service. And I would say uh, I'm always surprised at, at how many people come into City Hall to go up and just talk to the police department, you know, because I would think my sort of my thought is like I only call the police when if I need to by calling 911. You know, I don't I'm not just going to the police department to, to hang out. <laughs> but we get a lot of foot traffic, a lot of visitors. And right now it's not really the most conducive environment for that so we're working on it any other questions or comments or i know i saw our police chief the other day and, and i asked him i said i'm in the oversight committee and I, I go are you really getting the funds that you need and he goes well i'm relieved he goes, we have a new city manager. I've been working with him, and he's found some funds to keep us going in direction. So it was, it was like, it was good to hear that, that uh, our funds, that our city manager is making sure our police department gets what he needs because uh, they're out in force now. I saw them on four bikes the other night, okay? And so I think that was... That was funds that we really hadn't put away for. We just, I don't know where you found those funds, but you did. Well, so the, thanks. The, thank you. Thank you for that. The bicycles we were able to do on no budget, but the motorcycles that are coming, those are going to, you know, we're, we, we identified some funding for that, so we were able to do that. But there's some things we're going to need coming up. We sort of started with the free and then the things we could move money around on. There's going to be some things coming up that, will have to be budget discussions. So, but uh, but it's a, we, we're sort of getting there and uh, we're all working together to make it happen. So. We had seen him the other day at that HOA coalition meeting, uh, David, and, and we had we had asked if there was a way we could help him with any things that he couldn't get from the city. And he goes, well, sometimes people donate things. And, um, and we talked about, um, when I saw him on the street, uh, he talked about um, that he's got a regular bicycle helmet, but those are there's are some bicycle helmets that have lights built into them as far as not headlights, but tail lights with blinkers and stuff on them like that. And that's something we could be uh, looking at here so that we that we can get him some side equipment that might not be the main street. The accoutrement to go with it, right? That's right. Yeah. <laughs> It was a good discussion, and he and by the way, he's saying that he's getting bag, bagged all the time. No matter where he goes on that bicycle, people pull him over. So he thinks they're getting a lot of exposure. Oh, well, they are. Yeah. Great. 
Right. Now you mentioned the motorcycles. Is sure. it going to be just just one, or is it more than one? So we got approval to purchase one. Um, sort of to the point that was being made, we found some money. Uh, I hate to say found money because we know where all our money mm -hmm. is. We're not finding it, <laughs> but we looked and prioritized the motorcycles. Uh, our the first motorcycle. So we're we have the purchase of the first. The chief and I are actually working on a plan to get a second, and we may actually be able to do that either at no impact or very little impact uh, by partnering with another city. So we're working on that right now too. But you know, it's all, all this stuff is you know, it's like we sort of we are working in one direction. If we get stuck in in that opportunity, we thought we had doesn't pan out, then we might have to come back and have a budget conversation. But we think we're going to be able to get to uh, based on where we're at right now. So. Now, does that mean the hiring of more police officers to go with it, or will you take police officers that we already have? Not, uh, not yet, as far as hiring new people. We, have a, we actually have an officer, and he spoke at the meeting. I try not to single people out because I don't know if they want to be singled out, but he spoke at the meeting and I think most people maybe kind of recognize that he had been a motorcycle officer for the city previously. Yeah. And I get the sense that he's actually excited about getting back on a bike. So um, so he, I think he's going to be the first. And then we have a couple officers who are talking to him about getting trained up to be the second. And so we'd start out with internal, you know, officers. But all of this is part of, you know, I want this to be really more forward looking than backward looking and we're getting to that point but you know in the future I want to be able to come and say here's what we're thinking about doing next year and we want to use these funds to do it and I think we're going to start working towards doing that yeah no I'm, I'm excited about that and I think um, um, public safety is of the utmost importance in our city and especially traffic safety and I think that really needs to be a priority. We have way too many speeders and just, I've been shocked. You know. <laughs> I've been shocked coming back. So people who know my history is I lived in Wainimi for 10 years while I worked for Oxnard. And then uh, I ended up um, moving because I got the pigs. I don't know if people know that, but I got pigs and they're not allowed in Port Wainimi. So you're famous for your pigs. <laughs> yeah, I was say. Can't tell. But uh, so we, we moved out, and as I've come back, it, the amount of the traffic incidents that I see, I'm like, this was not how it was 10 years ago. And uh, the challenge is, you know, things change, and it's harder to fix maybe, and now there's faster cars. You know, even electric cars, uh, you know, accelerate faster than, you know, older cars used to accelerate. You know, there's just new challenges. And so... Um, uh, we recognize it, we're working on it, and now the challenge is gonna be making the impact. But we just did a big council meeting where we focused on, uh, we tried to so, kind of show that by focusing on traffic safety. And that's where we talked about bringing back the motorcycles, installing more speed humps, uh, and um, and then lowering the speed limits in eight locations. So part putting those all together, we're hoping that makes an impact. But even the day after we had an accident, you know, so. Uh, we're working on it. Um, for what it's worth, I get the star, Ventura County Star. I read it every morning. And the amount of people getting killed in Ventura County is appalling. I mean, you, you don't run across seeing an accident every day, but there's two or three people a week oftentimes, pedestrians, bicyclists, people get run over by trains, crazy people driving. I mean, it, it's it's really alarming. and um, so anything we can do to, to, to slow these people down, I'm, I think we're all in favor of, and uh, dig deep in whatever funds we have to get that done. It, it saves lives, and plus it's just irritating. I mean, these idiots with the loud cars and the, the donuts, and it's a. Uh, when I was a kid, bluntly, we did terrible things like drag race every place, uh, <laughs> which was probably even more dangerous. But we grew out of it, and uh, now we got these cars that are modern, I don't think they're as fast as the old ones were from zero to 100 or whatever, but uh, they're pretty fast and and they're loud. So I'm, I'm hoping when we get a, a and, and I think, a, a, let me back up. I, I worked in Thousand Oaks for many years and on Thousand Oaks Boulevard, there's a guy on a motorcycle that sat there with a the radar by the 23 freeway pointing it. 
he didn't have to wait. I mean, it, as soon as Catherine has pointed his radar gun, he, he went and got somebody in. <laughs> and and uh, and it did slow traffic down somewhat. So I'm hoping we can get somebody who's aggressive and can be on top of this. And yeah, do they have radar guns? I think so. That's a good question. I think so, but I'll follow up on that. Well, at one point they didn't have radar guns, and if that would be something, I would really yeah. If not, that I seems like want, want to. Want you to know, die. we uh, the chief didn't give me permission to tell this story, but I'm going to anyway. Um, because uh, it was just on Monday night, I think he went out on his bicycle, and he rolled up. And as he rolled up, you know, people didn't realize it was the chief of police on the bicycle, and a car starts doing the donuts. And he flashes his, the, the, you know, it's not police lights, but the lights, and he catches their attention, and they speed away. And um, we were talking about it, and he goes, that's why next time we're going to have, as soon as we get the motorcycle, we're going to have them 50 feet down the, the road, and when they try to speed away, the motorcycles will get on them. So I think we're starting, we just, uh, at this point, they can outrun the chief on his bike, unfortunately. <laughs> but we're getting there. I think I think there's a pretty good consensus in the city with everybody. I, I, historically, the things that have been the biggest problem are homeless people and the and the traffic. And you know, there's been a when you go around, there's a lot more homeless people other places in here. We've done a pretty good job at it, yeah. um, and, and it's a far cry from what it was a few years ago. So that's we got that mole walked down, and now we got the traffic popping back up. Yeah. So hopefully, we can piggyback on this and yeah and there's a rumor that the state you know one of the challenges on the the unhoused issue is that the state was really tying cities hands on what they could do and there's a um i guess there's a case pending where the state might finally sort of like uh, um undo some of those restrictions so over the next six months to a year we might actually be able to implement some new things on that mm -hmm. too so any other right. questions? I have a couple of things, comments I'd like to do about the budget, but go ahead, anybody. So going back to um, the city working with the community on budget planning, do you guys normally do that like at a certain time of the year? And is that when we will also be notified of any upcoming expenses? Yes, yeah, so we do the two-year budget, and normally we start planning for that like in well, early on, but we adopted sometime in May for the next two years. But then we also do what we call a revised budget because it is a two-year bu budget, so it's always tougher to to project out for the second year of it. So we do come back to council with adjustments, a revised budget. So, for example, we adopted uh, 23 24, 24 25, but 24 25 will be going back to council like sometime in May and doing an update because based on trends, you know, a lot of the projections may may change one way or another. So we'll be bringing that back. So that's an opportunity to take a look at how much we budgeted for measure your revenues, looking at the revisions based on trends, and then also looking at expenditures. Um, so that's an opportunity to to look at, at those expenditures, yeah. And um, we'll put together um, a schedule for doing that. And we'll commit that as part of that schedule early on, it'll be a conversation with this group because at least then we can sort of tell you what the budget's looking like and what we're seeing and then get some, you know, feedback from, uh, from the measure use. Mm -hmm. So, so we'll build that in. Uh, typically when I go through the budgeting process, I like to put like a budget calendar together and that has all the different committees and things we'll, we'll work with. And I think for Wanimi, we don't have many committees, but this one, primary one I'd, I'd try to include in that uh, process leading up to that going to council. So early next year. Okay. So I sat down and did an analysis. So I got all the, going back to 19 and added this all together. And I'm not an accountant, so uh, I may have messed this up, but it looks like we have about close to $2 million in unspent fees, money. Is that so we had because initially when uh, measure U was adopted we didn't specifically have a tracking mechanism to track the expenses um, which i had mentioned before now we do we have a project code and then now we're even taking it a step further to even plan ahead um, and, and know what we're going to spend it on um, 
the information that was provided in, um, first off, the, the information that was provided in fiscal year 2020 was based on a, it was, I think it was mostly safety because of the fact that there was not a specific project code, not that expenses, there were expenditures related to Measure U, but they were tougher to track because we didn't have that. Um, and what you're referring to is the, I think it was fiscal year 2021 that we had. What, what I have is, um, when, I, when I looked at the handout you gave us, um, we had a SURFA in 19, 19 gets squirrely because it was mm -hmm. first, it hadn't it had been a fiscal yeah. year. That was a wash. It looks like yeah. all the money went to the police department. Yeah. Uh, the next year, 20, 2020 mm -hmm. and 2021. Let me get my package. All the attachments. And, and so I wanted to attach the um, historical information. It's in your package so that we can um, go back and cover. So we covered 2023 unaudited, and then in 2020. So in 2022, we. There were three million sixty-eight in Measure U revenues, and based on the amounts that were actually "quote unquote" that uh, quoted to the Measure U expended expenses, it was two point four million. So there were six hundred forty-five thousand available for administration and operations um, that weren't specifically identified um, to the Measure U, um, and then. In 2022, I think that's the one that you are referring to. Oh, 2021, I'm sorry. 2020 and 2021. Yes. Looks so, like there was about a million, almost a million four that wasn't spent on Measure U. Yes. That wasn't identified as Measure U and was available for administration and operations. And at that time, we had identified a schedule of CIP projects that um, were going to be um, funded by Measure U. And actually, some of those projects are still in the works. Some of them have rolled over to 2024. Um, so we can take a look at that at the next meeting and provide you with the, that schedule of because what it projects were. It looks like there's about, from what I can see, almost it, it's close to two yeah. with the 1.3, correct, and the 640. We still have that money? Five. Or did it go somewhere? Those are funds. So those are, um, like I mentioned, we had construction, larger projects that were in progress, which have rolled over now to this year. And so those will be fund paid for, I should say, with the Measure U funds. Because uh, those are going to be completed likely in 2024. We rolled a lot of those to 2024. Um, I did pull them to get a status. Some of them are complete, but very minimal. Some of the larger ones rolled over. So there's what, still. Can you tell me what sort of projects they were? Yes. Okay. List, but I had a list of the projects. Oh, here it is, smaller version. Um, and I can make copies of. And so some of them work like the tree inventory software, 25,000 that was completed. Some of it um, is um, having started is the roof beach lifeguard building. Um, beach parking lots, Volker parking lots. And so those projects are rolled into 2024. Uh, the Bubbling Springs parking lot, uh, community center parking lot, 
Miranda Park Building Structural Engineer, the Miranda Park Building Remodel, uh, Miranda Power Parking Lot, and then the big one was the Miranda Park Tennis and Pickleball Court Reconstruction. We spent, um, actually that one was completed. It was 240000 we actually spent two hundred and fifty-two thousand, um, and then the Miranda Park tennis tennis court automated lights eighty thousand that was complete, um, and then we had a total of a, a total of one hundred eighty-six thousand one hundred eighty-six in facility we have a community center exterior paint the HBAC, um and electrical pole paint at Bubbling Springs. So there were, it was a total of 186,000 that was complete. Um, and so some of it has been completed. Some of it has rolled over to 2024. If I may offer at the next meeting, we can review this and update it with the projects that have been completed and then the ones that rolled into 2024. And that is, I was actually, that was my next point. We have a meeting uh, in December and we don't really have, because I won't have audited financials by then. So if the committee uh, provides direction, I can do that and update the list of those projects. Yeah, that'd be good because it looks yeah. on, on for, yeah. what we were handed, it looks like we yeah. have two million bucks. Mm -hmm. And if we don't, we don't. If it's, yeah. if it's been spent on things like, you know, the, mm -hmm. the lifeguards, uh, I mean, that's fine. If it's been spent on a, trip to Hawaii for the city council. <laughs> <laughs> it, it might be okay if they take us, but. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Okay, if, so if you could break that down for us, we could see where the money is. Absolutely. So, so I, I, my question is, do we have a surplus sitting there? Has it already been allocated? It's part of the general fund. So it's really part of the um, general fund balance. So anytime that we don't spend and um, because the Measure U is part of the general fund, um, but there are projects, like I said, that we had identified that we will be completed that are um, going to be funded with Measure U of revenues. Uh, but to answer your question, we don't we don't have a separate fund with for the Measure U. No, it's I part of the general, the general fund. fund yeah, so our job is to make sure sure that that money gets spent. Mm -hmm. And, and to be blunt, since it all goes to the general fund, mm -hmm. in many ways, you can just change the name of something. And so it, it becomes it becomes a measure you thing. Yeah. Yeah. Lupe and I, as we speak, are working on um, sort of creating some um, specific funds for things like capital improvement project. And we talked about, you know, whether we need to do it for measure you or if just tracking it more closely moving forward will sort of accomplish the same thing but um uh, the maybe the longer answer uh, of what lupe was saying is up until now we did not have separate funds for measure u we did not have separate funds for cip we did not have separate funds for um the port um the oxnard harbor district revenue mm -hmm. sharing agreement and so one of the things that um for me coming in that we've talked about is I do want to create separate funds for those so that if you don't spend money from this fund one year, it stays in that fund and it builds up a fund that you can use for a project uh, versus I think the practice uh, three or four years ago was it went into the pot and who sort of who knew where the where that money got shuffled and went to, you know. So um, so we are working on that now. We have I think Lupe had a draft of it to me this morning that I haven't gotten to read yet, but we want to create some of those uh, those um, reserve funds, uh, or I'm sorry, uh, funds so that we can track these things better moving forward um, and uh, sort of um, keep it from getting mixed into the pot. But the, the challenge with that, and the reason why people sometimes don't want to do that is it means you have less money in the general fund and then less money for operations. So there's, there's the trade-off, but I think the way we've been proposing it, and I think with your um, feedback of like, if we can use this to help pay for like public safety, that will relieve some pressure from the general fund. Yeah. You know, there's you, there's a little bit of a trade off you can do there. I, I have to say that um, this was kind of all badly managed until recently. I mean, uh, uh, we 
our, our first report basically said we gave all the money to cops go away. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We didn't have any meetings for three years. We wouldn't couldn't get any data. Um, that that's kind of what you're walking into now. Yeah. So there's there's this big mess yeah. that that was created by design or by incompetence or by God knows what. But anyway, uh, I uh, think it's um, you're, so you're you're taking this over now and yeah. got to deal with that. Which is I don't envy you. That's yeah. not, I think to me, sort of the elephant in the room was we had all these revenue sources and we just put them into a pot and we paid our bills, you know, for the last 10 years. And uh, and it was sort of um, like, well, this is a general fund or a general tax, which it was. Uh, so it can be mixed in and it can just pay for what we need. But then if you go back and you read the ballot language that was promised to the voters, yeah, it's a general tax, but we did tell people we will use it for these things, you know. And um, probably the frustrating thing for me going back is they they did have enough expenses in these areas that they could have shown yeah. that it we are using it for what we promised we'd use it for. But there was just always, I think, that disconnect. So we're looking at how to sort of make that clearer and, and um, uh, really show, like, the port's revenue sharing the contract says we'll use it for certain things. We need to start tracking it and show yeah. that we're using it for certain things. Measure you, we said we'd use it for certain things. We're going to start tracking it and show you that. So um, I think just in the two months I've been here, I feel like we've already like made really good progress on it. So I don't think it's it's not impossible. You know, it's just somebody has to sit down and do it. And but this 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 latest packet was completely transparent. I mean, it was there. Yeah, that was the data you had. Yep. I appreciate that. Yep. It's just we. We have to answer to people, you know, that, that doing our job, and I want to make sure that at least on paper we can go. If you're spending what you're supposed to, and yep. Look, and, and you have this weird thing where you can really rename something and call it public safety because it is, and yeah, they can move it around. That's fine with me. Questions? David told me about this before I joined the committee which uh, gave me some anxiety about joining this committee. <laughs> but I'm glad that we're on the right track. So we can blame all this stuff on David since he was the only one who was here before. <laughs> okay. Well, thank you. Yes. Yes, we'll add it as an agenda item for the next meeting. Uh, provide a follow-up email on the budget question of, you know, sort of um, our timeline for the budget and when we'll have the Measure U meeting up front in front of that. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'd sure like to make a motion that we adjourn. Uh, we have one more thing to oh, do. We? Yeah. Okay. So, um, Find my script here. Part of the agenda was to appoint an ad hoc committee to write a report, and it feels like maybe we need more, need more data before we can do that. So I'd like to um, a motion maybe to postpone that till the next session. Okay, we have to. For this report. Okay. We have received a recommendation to receive the financial year 2023 audited review and expenditure report. Uh, may I have a motion? There's just a motion to receive the report. Yeah, may I have a, may I have a motion to receive the yes, report? Yes, I have a Vic motion to receive the report. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion passes unanimously. Okay, so then I guess the next agenda is to consider appointment of one or two members to prepare an annual report or other documents for submission to the Measure U Committee prior to submission to the City Council. I would like to consider moving that to, uh, till after we get the new data. 
Do we have a motion? I would motion to uh, adjourn it to our next meeting. We have a second. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion passes unanimously. Okay. I believe, is there anything else we need to do? You're a fearless leader here, so. <laughs> Just hitting, <laughs> hitting the gavel to adjourn. Okay. Okay. Is there a motion to adjourn the meeting? <laughs> you have to call it. Very good. Yeah. 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 We're adjourning the meeting at 4.56 p.m. Thank you. <laughs>